So welcome back everybody. Uh, we will start our next talk with Felix Frank and he will talk about what's wrong about Puppet. Enjoy. Thanks. Um, hi. I'm Felix and uh, yeah, we are talking about Puppet and I think there's nothing wrong with Puppet per se, but uh, yeah, we get to that. So uh, a bit about me, I'm an operations person, I have been an operations person for quite a while. Um, my first uh, assignment was at a uh, physics institute, which, uh, which is actually a CF engine shop. Uh, that was interesting, although I didn't get to do much with CF engine in my time there. And uh, then I spent uh, six years at a managed hosting uh, provider and did all the things with Puppet. That was, that was pretty neat. And uh, just a few months ago, I switched to yet another managed services provider, the Unbelievable Machine Company. Um, we, we do managed hosting, managed services, but uh, there's a focus on big data and we, we do some things beyond that. I'll get a bit more into that later. And well, Puppet was nice enough to rebrand right in this uh, time frame, so this slide is nicely balanced. I do have a Twitter, I do have a blog. Uh, check those out if that's uh, things that interest you. Okay, with that out of the way, uh, we already tested that uh, everything is readable. Can everybody understand what I'm saying? Can you hear me breathing? <laughs> that's been an issue in this venue, so I guess this works. All right, so software, right? I mean, does it even work? most of the time, or is it more like, oh yeah, I, I have the software, and, and, and this time around, it even did what I wanted it to do, and, and I didn't spend days freaking with it. But um, truth is, most software will behave erratically, and Puppet is a fairly complex piece of software, and it, and it can and will fail in very uh, exciting ways. Matter of fact, there's so many ways in which Puppet can uh, do things wrong for you, uh, that I, I cannot possibly cover all the bases. So um, I'm going, going to focus on a couple of things that typically can go wrong and trip you up and uh, see if I can give you some help towards uh, getting a grip on, on these scenarios. So uh, one thing that, uh, that we see in everyday operation is that uh, the, uh, you, you configure Puppet and you're pretty sure that it will now do the thing that you want it to do, but somehow configuration isn't, isn't quite what you, what you expected. Uh, some component, be it the master, be it the agent, just won't uh, like consume these new files that you have deployed and you expect to be read and, and used. And uh, that can be pretty interesting and frustrating, and I'll just uh, show you some ways that I use to uh, get a handle on those cases. Um, of course, it's always fun when your uh, manifest plainly won't compile or won't run, and Puppet just won't work. I mean, that's, that's pretty much uh, something that can happen any other day, but uh, there's, there's some uh, ways to navigate those as well, and I'd like to show those. And finally, um, sometimes things do compile and they will run, but uh, they won't do what you want to do. My, my favorite is plainly nothing happens. So, yay, I, I added this new file resource to my manifest, or oh, this XX should now fire nothing. So, what do we do? Let's find out. Also, um, just yesterday I found this relevant book which is which is really interesting, and uh, which which encapsulates pretty well the, the the state of affairs. Which is sometimes Puppet tells you that something went wrong, but it's it's so opaque and and so nondescript that that it's pretty much impossible to to glean what's going on. Um, thanks to Craig Dunn, by the way, for this one. Okay, so our first. First scenario is Puppet behaving some way, and you, you want it to behave another way, but nada. 
Um, so there's there's two tools that I uh, bring into play for this. So uh, one one I'm uh, designating the hammer, which is uh, not not very subtle approach, but it's it's a very uh, uh, using using S trace. You can analyze all kind of things. You can also use it to to watch your other pieces of software, not only Puppet. So it's something that I like uh, using. Uh, not if all else fails, but when I'm too lazy to to get more into depth, and usually I'm pretty lazy. Um, if you want to uh, be a little more subtle about it, um, Puppet brings some tools of its own, um, being uh, the config print suit, and and we'll see those in action as well. So, it's uh, live demo time. Uh, focus. Okay, this will be interesting because I, I cannot see what I'm typing here, so uh, all, all errors are my own. Um, so, uh, simple example. You, you run, you're running Puppet and you want to find out uh, what puppet.conf file is actually being read. Because there could be more than one puppet.conf file in your system for whatever reason. Like, you are running Puppet in different contexts. Uh, different groups have different uh, puppet agent environments. So um, the S-trace approach is simple enough. We uh, wrap our usual call with uh, S-trace. Uh, let's do a simple apply. Oops, ah, off to a good start. All right, so um, I like using Puppet Apply for, for simple testing because I can just pass manifest code right on the CLI. That's probably something that folks who use master and agent don't do often, and the folks who use masterless Puppet do all the time, but it's, uh, it's pretty neat, it's pretty helpful. And so this is, this is just a call to, to do a simple uh, statement on the console, and S-Trace, um, of its own will we'll, uh, dump a whole lot of information on us about all the uh, system calls that are being done. Um, it's a good idea to, to limit those to the uh, operations that are pertinent to, to the file system. And uh, that's still quite a lot. So what you want to do is, of course, you grab that. But um, since s tries helpfully uh, puts all the information on, on the standard error. You want to redirect that to standard out before you pipe that anywhere. So now that's done. Let's look for the puppet.conf. What? Huh. That, uh, that's not a lot going on. Notice, thank you. What the, okay. <clears throat> you know, I, I shouldn't have prepared this live demo on a Linux system rather than a Mac. So, bummer. I think S trace is not an option at the moment. I'll I won't bore you with me reading lots of man pages on finding out how S trace works on a Mac, because oh man. Um, seriously though, okay, let's you know what? Let's just look at my canned slides about that. So I I would have done pretty much just that, and um, on a Linux system, this is what happens. Um, you get get some. Uh, some lines of output. Um, in this case, really not much, just that a puppet.conf file was found and was opened. And in this case, because I'm not running as a root, uh, it's being pulled from my home directory. 
and there's a dot puppet labs tree there and this is puppet 4 running so things are in dot puppet labs if you're running puppet 3 you'll find things in dot puppet or if you're root it's an etsy puppet and for puppet 4 it's etsy puppet labs okay um now I think looking for what puppet conf is being used is a rather quaint example. Um, something more interesting is uh, where is a specific provider loaded, but because in, in some cases your system can become a little unwieldy with the Ruby code floating around and can be hard to uh, discern uh, what Ruby code is loaded. As a matter of fact, um, Ruby will go all over the place looking for stuff. So. If you do this, you get a wall of text and uh, it all says things like, oh, I, I looked in, uh, hey, I see you've got the uh, see if property list gem, so let's see if there are puppet providers in there. Oh, there are none. Okay, I'm gonna keep looking. And so on and so forth. And if you do uh, some Ruby development type stuff, you'll have lots of gems on your system. So. That's a lot of lookups, but if you wade through all that, you will finally find that, uh, yay, it found the puppet gem, and there's providers in there. And yes, it loaded the app provider. Uh, fun fact, just yesterday, I, I uh, had, a, had a case where one of our agents behaved weirdly and, and couldn't uh, apply a resource from uh, that, uh, uh, we, we added a, a file line resource um, from standard lib, right? And turned out one of the agents had a local installation of the standard lib module. So, so at some point someone had done a puppet module install of standard lib, but that was pretty old. And so uh, the, the agent on that box would load the wrong file line type and it wouldn't work. Didn't, didn't support other parameters and yeah, hijinks ensue. So that's uh, pretty dangerous and, and that's something that you can very well trace using this method. And matter of fact, I did. Okay, so uh, back to PuppetConf. Um, I told you we don't need to use uh, S-Trace for everything. And as a matter of fact, um, let's go back to demo mode. So the, uh, let's call it the real way to find the puppet conf is um, to use this neat uh, tool. You can, you can print all the configuration values from puppet and uh, the location of the puppet conf is yet another customizable value. So um, what I like doing um, when I don't know what an, what an option is called um, I will just print all configuration and grab for whatever I'm looking for. So let's see about PuppetConf. Okay, so there's there's like two uh, matches. One is the config file name, which is PuppetConf. So I can change that to like chef.conf. That would be confusing, but. Um, what happens is this is used to build the the full path to the to the puppet conf that is used. So the value that is actually of interest here is um, the config configuration, which is a great example. Well done. Um, so what you can do instead is you tell uh, tell the the tool just give me the value of config so that I can tell where PuppetConf is being looked up. Which just gives us this without the uh, key value notation. So this is something that you can then uh, use in your shell scripts, right? Kind of like this and yay, now we know where PuppetConf is. Um, again, that, that is not the most powerful example, but uh, we can you can put it to good use if you want to find out more information about what Puppet does, where it looks for stuff. Um, also, we'll get back to that in a later demo. All right. Um, uh, one thing that's important is to, to take note of um, in what, which section of the configuration you're, you're moving about, right? You can 
uh, configure the agent differently from the master. This is something that is usually not used extensively, but for, for, some, for some distinct values it's, it's pretty important to uh, make sure that uh, master and agent use the uh, correct uh, terms. So um, usually you want to pass the section uh, option and can say like uh, if a, if I run puppet as the agent, uh, what is the puppet conf? And if I if I run as a master instead, uh, what is that? Uh, let's do something useful for fun. So let's see what a cert name is in use. So someone configured the master to use localhost for the certificate CN. <laughs> That's pretty crazy, right? Um, but for the agent, that's even less useful, so that's actually my, my FQDN here. Um, and so this is pretty basic. I could just look this up in puppet.conf and I get a pretty clear view of what's different between agent and master, but there are some... <sighs> One, one or the other uh, configuration value has different defaults for agent and master. And usually it's, it's not, an, not an issue, but um, you don't want to be uh, caught by this and at a bad moment uh, don't take note of which section you're looking into with, uh, with your puppet config print call and uh, work on wrong assumptions because that can send you into uh, the kind of debugging rabbit holes that you won't, don't want to find yourself in. Um, but then doing this uh, dash dash section is pretty clunky to me. What I, what I use instead all the time is this notation. So I'll just call whatever tool I want to invoke, like puppet agent. Puppet agent is something that most of you probably type a lot throughout the course of a day, and then at the dash dash config print option. So this way you get configuration values only for the agent. And you can use it with master, you can use it with apply. Uh, and puppet apply uh, is supported by the section uh, parameter, but you have to supply the user section, which is uh, not very intuitive to me, and uh, you can use it with all the other subcommands that are there as well. So, yay for the config print alternative. Um, are there any questions so far? Please. Uh, whether it's whether it's possible to get the uh, parameters that are set on the command line. Oh, uh, if you're configuring through the form and, well, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm not really familiar with uh, using uh, Puppet through the form and, um, but uh, whatever way the, the parameters are being uh, tran uh, transferred from, from the form and to the agent should be visible uh, to this invocation, uh, David has a comment. Um, you can, if you have an oh, I, I think. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Um, I believe we're talking about two different concepts here because uh, the the ENC uh, will usually pass some some values that are being used to compile the the uh, catalog for each individual agent. But um, the, these these configuration values here, um, those don't really have anything to do with node specific uh, values that you pass through your ENC or through your manifest where you can set node variables. Um, I mean, these are really, um, let's just see it. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's a great example. But 
uh, thing, all, all the things that you can pass on the on the command line, right? Like uh, the wait for cert um, option or uh, the the state file, or all the all the information um, that the agent needs uh, to to do its operation and to to save its its stuff, to know where to send uh, its reports, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I hope this uh, somehow clears this up a little, but. Otherwise, let's let's talk later. <laughs> Other questions? Okay, um, let's move right on to the next um, issue. Focus. There we go. Um, so, assuming you have everything configured, okay, and you start working, but then Puppet just falls on its face, which it does. And I've looked up some uh, some of the most exciting uh, uh, error messages, and these are my favorites. Where Puppet will tell you, "Hey, I cannot invoke a method on new class." I mean, I don't know if, if you're lucky; you've never seen this. But if you do, it's never fun. Um, because this is basically uh, the Ruby equivalent of the null pointer exception, which, if you're not really uh, deep in the code base, just won't tell you much. So, it it will uh, uh, you can you can glean an idea of what's going on if you if you look at the uh, at the stack trace of where the error actually happened, um, and for that you need to uh, just pass the dash dash trace option to uh, your puppet invocation. And you know, I just remembered that I think I forgot to, uh, let's see if I, uh, if I handled that. extra fun when you have a German keyboard but use US layout. So great. Okay, so that's that's pretty normal. Nothing to see here. Um, you know what? Let's just uh, head back to the canned um, things. So, uh, what I've prepared uh, in advance is uh, a case where um, you you run your agent and you get a cryptic error and uh, in this case it's it's not even so bad because you get a manifest location oops focus like in this instance, you would, of course, uh, look at the manifest at that point to see uh, what the compiler was trying to do here. But um, let's just assume that this is a very innocuous piece of code and you, you don't know why it's failing this way. And uh -huh, sorry. And, uh, and yeah, uh, what, what you want to do is uh, see why 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 are you doing this? So um, let's look at traces. So uh, if you if you uh, just add the trace option, then you're uh, met with the same error message that I truncated here. So so here, uh, just imagine that that the whole shebang appeared, and then there's stack trace. And this one actually cannot really tell you much. So what it's saying is, um, yeah, I was doing a REST call and I, I was looking at whether I was getting a 200 OK response. And the context was I was trying to get my catalog. Uh, so yeah, thanks, Captain Obvious. I know that I was trying to get a catalog. And that didn't work. Um, so, uh, what you want to keep?
keep in mind is um, that this is happening on the master, so you have to trace the master. You you cannot get away with tracing on the agent. So um, another uh, helpful thing that you can do on your master rather than the agent is uh, if you got a shell on the master, you can uh, log into there and just uh, compile the catalog for one specific uh, node that you specify. So uh, in my preparations, the, the FQDN of my node was fflaptop.local. Uh, added with the dash dash compile option, and of course I requested a trace. And uh, what Puppet will tell you is, okay, I'm compiling. And uh, then the cryptic error message, that is not so cryptic, but um, the trace this time is rather telling because you see, uh-huh, um, there was some parsing going on. If you're, if you're familiar with the whole uh, Ruby deal, then you can even guess that a psych is involved that this was probably some uh, some sort of YAML problem, uh, but otherwise, um, the the fact that uh, this happened in the in the YAML backend of Hira, uh, when it uh, did some lookup operation, this could indicate to you that oh yeah, there's there's some YAML that is malformed in some kind of way, and now you can go ahead and hunt the actual error. So that's one example where the trace can be actually helpful to you. Um, now, in the real world, so this is, this is a trace that I took from an issue that, that we had with uh, one of uh, the modules um, that, we, uh, that I uh, worked with. And um, there was something fishy going on. I think it was, wasn't, was a puppet bug uh, concerning the uh, class containment code, whatever, and and this is this is pretty opaque. So all this is telling you, okay, um, the compiler class had been in the process of compiling something, and it it called a, a, a method that is named to resource, and and that in turn tried to convert something to a catalog, perhaps. But uh, but it's it's it really is nondescript as well. What what you could do is uh, jump into the code right here, uh, into the code place to, to try and, and get a feeling for what's being done and, and perhaps guess uh, what what value isn't there that it's being expected. But uh, yeah, this is this is a level of debugging that you usually don't want to descend into. So um, the most useful. Uh, part of this trace is that you can attach it to the bug report that you can file with Puppet. That's pretty much it. Okay, uh, enough with the tracing. Uh, any questions? Or can we just move along? Let's move along. Um, okay, so assuming, yes, you have everything configured right, and there's no weird error messages, but as I described earlier, so you, you've built something cool, you have exported resources, say, and, and you, you are expecting your LS node to, to tell the backup server how to uh, configure its backup, and on the backup node you import all the jobs, and it just won't. And uh, this, this isn't even limited to, to exported resources constructs. This can happen with all forms of manifests, like the simple, simplest of manifests that should just put a file or start a service on your node, and it, and it won't. And that's, uh, that's uh, yeah. I, if, if I encounter this, uh, it's, it's pretty uh, de demotivational and... Um, of course, the, the first thing you usually do is you, you enable debug mode, like uh, call Puppet Agent with dash dash debug, and you get this wall of text that may tell you about, um, okay, I'm, I'm looking at the resource, but I'm, I'm for whatever reason, I'm, I think I don't have to do any work on it. In other cases, you, you just don't find anything, and it's inconclusive. So... Um, what I will do in this situation is 
I'll really grab the catalog that the, the master has generated from the manifest and sent to the agent and inspect that. Okay. We can try and do this live. Okay, let's see what uh, this agent here does. Uh, are you kidding me? Yes, you are. The hell? Okay, that, that literally worked like half an hour ago. Uh, okay, debugging. Uh, uh, uh. Right, right. Exactly, yeah. That's exactly it. So, that's tiny. Oops. Forget the master. How can I forget the master? Um, another neat debugging tool. Um, just launch a standalone master somewhere. Uh, you can do this on your local box. I do this on my local box all the time. Bam. Um, and yay, this is still possible. Uh, somehow, this doing this is deprecated. I, I really hope that it just stays deprecated and isn't removed. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm barking up the wrong tree, I know. Um, so now we got a master running on, on the local host. Uh, remember um, how this is weird that uh, the, uh, the certificate is signed for local host, but this is outright necessary because, yay, local networks. And now the master's up, and the agent runs, and it doesn't do much. Um, what it's doing is it writes a nice message to the terminal. So um, the easiest way to look at the catalog that is responsible for this action is yet another um, subcommand that is not used often, and that's the puppet catalog subcommand. And you have to uh, tell it what the action is, and th this case it's just uh, find. Let's do it. So, uh, let's just scroll. Okay, here's where it starts, right? Um, and what you what you get is uh, a nicely formatted JSON that is the information that is passed from the master to the agent, um, with some boilerplate information like UUID and uh, the environment that can be interesting in debugging. And then there's the resources. Again, there's there's some boilerplate stuff in here like. Uh, Stage main, I mean, really, who cares? And uh, class settings, that can be confusing. This is just something that, that Puppet uses uh, internally that, that you don't really define yourself anywhere. But if you keep looking, you eventually find the one resource that we actually uh, added to the manifest and that ends up in the catalog. So uh, this is, if, if you're wondering why your notify doesn't show up, and I'm not sure whether it's actually in the catalog, you can use this to just um, take a look and see if, if the things are there. And, and this is pretty boring um, because there's not much going on in this resource, but let's look at uh, a more complex example. And uh, yeah, what I'm doing is, uh, I have prepared a node in my uh, in my site manifest that has a little more going on. I think it's this. And you know what? Guess that's safer. Because compiling. All right. So again, 
lots of JSON. And here we uh, actually encounter um, some resources. So this is a defined type I'm using. Um, not that much to see. So uh, I'm creating lots of users. So let's uh, see if we find some uh, user type resources. And there's one, right? So, so here's a user resource that is actually from the manifest. Or oh, you know what? Let's let's look at the manifest. Or should I? I mean, yeah. Why not? Because literally, I, I keep forgetting how this is set up. Oops. See, config print can be helpful for forgetful people as well. Um. OK. so. <clears throat> what I wanted to do was build a simple manifest that adds lots of resources to my catalog, so I have something to show. And um, I built some uh, defined types to make this easier. And um, what this does is I can just uh, pass a username, and it will create a user by the name. It will uh, create the home directory and um, a couple of dot files in this home directory. Also an authorized key for good measure. So um, I've just built a list of uh, names. And uh, I limited this. It used to be 50, but uh, that led to pretty serious compilation times on my machine. So we just use around 20 or so, and then just declare these. OK, so uh, here's one of these users. And uh, in this view, we can very easily check how did it end up looking in the catalog. Like, OK, it's in show present. This is his home. This can be really helpful if your manifest does some, let's say, evil tricks, like overriding parameter values that can be uh, pretty uh, difficult to to debug if if, if your overrides are all over the place, and and this is the truth. Like here, you see what's getting sent to the agent, and that could very well well explain why the agent is not doing what you expect. Looking at your manifest, um, same with the files, right? And here are all the parameters that keep floating in. So this is neat and all. And, and you get a comprehensive view, but it's, uh, to, to be quite honest, it's only half the truth. Because this is what's internally re referred to as the uh, resource catalog. And uh, if, you, if you want to look even deeper at, at what's going on uh, inside the Puppet process, you, you have to throw some Ruby at it. Um, and the way to do this is uh, Puppet will, will always um, uh, cache the catalog it received before applying it. So um, let's look at the, uh, whoops, I always forget the all. all the configs. So uh, uh, there's, there's lots, of, lots of caching going on. And um, what's most uh, important is the, right here is the, uh, where do we have it? The catalog cache terminus. Easy to remember, right? Um, and it's either JSON or YAML. 
and the default is JSON, so Puppet will put a, a JSON file somewhere that has just this catalog information. So um, I keep forgetting that as well. I think it's here. Um, so that the JSON terminus puts things in the client data deer. Uh, whereas if you choose YAML, it uses client YAML deer, which has no underscore and everything is really confusing. I suppose it's history. So um, let's see if we have a cached catalog. And we do, um, right? There's the one, where's the mouse? There it is. The one with the, just the notify, and then there's our complex uh, catalog we just looked at, and oops. So, JSON, right? Some great things about JSON. It's pretty compact, it's very portable, and it's very readable. Yeah, that was a joke. So, um, of course, you can, you can load this into any, what have you, Python, Ruby, script, whatever your uh, poison is. Um, I prefer Ruby, but um, let's, let's do the, the whole shebang and actually uh, request a... A YAML catalog because that allows some even neater tricks. Uh, and that is not what we can use. We have to do this. By the way, if you if you run with dash dash no op, then recent version of Puppet uh, will not write a cache catalog. That's that's just for security. It would be awkward if you like uh, do a no op against your crazy experimental environment and that gets cached and then for some reason the next run uses the cached catalog because something fails on the master and you have your weird experimental stuff applied. That will be bad, so there's no caching going on. Which means we cannot do a no-op, we have to do an actual run. Which is fun with this manifest because it tries to uh, create users and stuff, but uh, I'm running without root, so uh, expecting some red on the console right now. Compiling. Got some sorts. All right. Some red, some yellow. But that's not the important part. We wanted to look at the um, at the cached catalog. And as I said, it's now in the, in the uh, client YAML directory. And here we go. So this is somewhat more readable, but what's, what's really important is that this YAML is, is annotated um, so that Ruby can actually load it and, and bless it into an actual object and not just this uh, hash structure. So let's do this. Um, do I even? Oops. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, let's start with IRB. So, uh, how much time do I have left? Cool. Um, so, uh, IRB is your. Uh, uh, interactive Ruby shell and you can run your Ruby code here and uh, what we want Ruby to do now is load that YAML that we just looked at and uh, and give us uh, an object that we can uh, inspect so for one you want to load the uh, YAML module and um, and this is pretty cool you can just load Puppet as a library. And now, now all the things that Puppet can do, we can do 
uh, from our interactive shell. So let's try and um, say, uh, let's call it cat. So let's make a local variable named cat. And um, we want to uh, load some YAML from a file. And it's this one. See if this works. It did. So we have a catalog, and um, uh, this is nice and all. And you can do things like uh, pretty print the catalog, which is not really helpful because it's just a huge wall of text. Um, Right. Or we can say inspect the catalog, which is mildly more helpful, but not really. So what we really want is yet another uh, piece from the Ruby toolbox, which is the Pry debugger. And Pry is another gem uh, that you can install next to Puppet and everything. And uh, let's load it. And let's enter it. So uh, this is this is kind of a mantra: require pry binding dot pry. Um, this is pretty much what I do whenever I face any Ruby troubles. I, I can I can also put this right into some Ruby code file where something goes bleak, and it's essentially a breakpoint and puts me into this debugger. So uh, and what this does for me is. Um, for one, uh, let's see what happens if I just, uh, yeah, this did not work. Oh, do do we do we even retain our catalog? Uh, we do. Okay, so so Pry allows some some interesting stuff. Like I can CD into this variable that I have created earlier. So. I've done a CD cat, and cat is the variable name, and now I'm in the catalog, if you will. And I can use ls to see what, what's, uh, what's going on. What, what are the, uh, the local, what are the methods that I can use here that have been defined for such a catalog? Um, and uh, what, are the, what are the local uh, member values, right? So. I can now, oops, I can now just look at, say, the version of this or the, uh, what have we, environment. So, um, the, this is the resources. That's, that's a pretty big list of resources. And um, it's a it's a huge array, and somehow I expected this to be more insightful. Ah, there, yeah, that's better. Okay, um, so the the add resources, the the member variable, uh, just holds a list of of these key values, and uh, if instead we invoke a method self.resources, then then we get uh, actual information. But still, uh, again, that's that's not a huge improvement over the or what we what we had earlier in the JSON. But um, the good part is that we are now in this in this Ruby world, and we can we can start. Uh, uh, looking uh, into things. So let's make another variable, um, reslist. And again, we can cd into there. And this is just an array. But I like doing this because I always forget 
uh, how the how the uh, filtering and and selection <coughs> methods of Ruby arrays work. And here I just got them on hand, and um, I can do uh, cool things like. Uh, give me the uh, description. <coughs> Sorry. A description of methods like find all and filter and what have you. So this is really the the, the most comfortable way to to navigate uh, my Ruby resources and and to look at things and to get help along the way. So, if you're in doubt about what Puppet is doing, uh, consider using lots of pry. Okay. Here, even the slide says so. Okay, we're almost done. So, um, of course, you don't uh, want to get debugging anytime you encounter some issue with Puppet. So, uh, it's often it's a much better idea to get some help. A good place for that is Puppet Puppet's own Ask site, <coughs> man, uh, which is basically Stack Overflow but just for Puppet. It's cool. Uh, then there's the Puppet Forge, of course. Um, Many things uh, in Puppet you don't even have to solve yourself. There are modules for a wide range of applications, and uh, if all that else fails, you can at least look at other people's code, perhaps get some inspiration. Uh, the mailing list is pretty good. That's a Google group. Um, there's IRC, there's a Slack now that's pretty new. There's the PUGS, the uh, Puppet user groups. Hi, Martin. And uh, yeah. You're not alone. Reach out, get help. Puppet community is there for you. So thanks for listening. Uh, before we go to the final Q and A, um, some final notes. Um, yeah, we too are hiring. Um, as I said, there's there's managed services. There's lots of operation roles, uh, roles, but not only those. There's also a data science department. We we can outfit our customers with. Uh, custom uh, big data solutions, and uh, yeah, if if you know anyone who's looking for a role in in this kind of uh, alternative tech sector, yeah, just reach out, um, talk to me, or check out our careers page. There's lots of uh, cool roles. Uh, yeah, I I think it's pretty pretty nice deal. Check it out. Um, there's a couple of books that you can read. Um, I personally vouch for their quality. I think Martin over there will also vouch for them. Um, and finally, uh, there's another tool that I'd like to, uh, yeah, inform you about. It's it's a it's an, an early stage of development, but it's it's pretty neat. It, it takes some uh, ideas from Puppet, but uh, expands on them and and has some pretty fresh designs and. Uh, yeah, it's called MGMT. It's uh, it's written by uh, James, and all the info is on the the technical blog of James. And yeah, if you're if you uh, want to see some some fresh new innovative ideas on configuration management, you might want to look at MGMT as well. And that's it. More questions. Yeah, that that probably was really not not a good idea to give you right after lunch, right? That's that's a lot of stomach. So, do we have any questions here now? Anyone? But yeah, thanks for watching me ramble on about Ruby and all the all the internals. Thank you very much, Felix, for being here. Bye.